Today we're going to work on a solo arrangement of Norwegian Wood by the Beatles. This was voted on over at my Patreon page, and if you check out the link down below, you can download the tab to this as well. I'm really excited about this song because it's broken up into a few different parts, with the intro being a simpler version of the song, and then as we go into the verse, it uses a lot of really intricate strumming techniques to make a really cool sound. So let's go and start with the intro. Nice and simple overall. We're going to start with this G chord to play this. We're going to take our index finger place on the second fret of the C string, middle finger here on the third fret of the E string, and our pinky finger here on the fifth fret of the A. Now we're going to take our thumb and just strum through all four strings. And then you'll notice the next note is seven on the A, but you'll notice there's a little slide marker there. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to play the five on the A string and slide it to the seven on the A. And this is a little bit tricky just because it's easy to undershoot or overshoot. So what I like to do as I'm doing the slide is to increase my pressure a little bit and try to go right up next to that fret wire on fret seven. I really find that that gives me the sound that I'm looking for. Again, take some practice. Then we're going to play five on the A string, and you can just slide your pinky down. Then we're going to play three on the A string, and what I like to do for this is it might be more intuitive to use the middle finger, but we want to actually use our, uh, well, excuse me, it might be more intuitive to use the ring, but we want to use our middle finger. And the reason is, is because we're going to play that three, and then we're going to move that three down to two and build a G chord with our index finger on the second fret of the C string, ring finger on the third fret of the E, and middle here on the second of the A. So using the middle finger there can really help slide into position to get that chord. So we have slide. And then the last part of this measure, we're going to play zero, two, three, zero. So we just take our middle finger off of the A string. And then we're gonna add our pinky onto three of the A, leaving the other fingers where they are. Then the middle finger can come to two on the A, taking the pinky off. And then just holding this, we're going to strum our G, C, and E strings using our thumb to stop on the A string. Notice how I'll actually touch it, but I'll stop on that. And then we're going to do a chord change here. We're going to go to a D minor, but not our normal D minor how we play. It's pretty simple overall. Middle finger is going to go here to the second fret of the C string, and our index finger is going to go here to the first fret of the E string. And we're going to strum just our G, C, and E strings, again, stopping on the A string there. And then we're going to take our ring finger and place it on the third fret of the A string and play that. Then we're going to take all of our fingers off and play open on the E. And then we're going to take our index finger and place it on two of the C. And the reason we're using our index finger is to finish this, we're going to play that G chord again, adding our ring finger on three of the E and our middle finger here on two of the A. So this whole stanza looks and sounds something like this. So that's all using the thumb as it goes through and really focuses more on the left hand as you play it. So as we move on to the verse here, I want you to get really comfortable with the fretting with the left hand because we're going to introduce a lot of technique here with the right hand. But let's go ahead and take a look at the verse. It looks something like this, which is kind of overwhelming. There's a lot of pieces here, but we're going to break it down. And I promise you with practice, you'll be able to play it. And it is one of the most addicting things I've ever played on the ukulele. It's so much fun. So what we need to start with is talking about some of these terms. So you'll notice the very beginning, it says a G chord, the same zero, two, three, five we just played, right? So all of the, the actual fretting that's taking place with the left hand is identical with this as it was before. There's just a little bit more going on. And so it's this little three quarter square symbol. And what that is, is a downstrum. And specifically, it's a downstrum with your index finger. So anytime you see that marker, it means that we're going to be doing a down strum. And when it's over multiple strings, it's going to be using your index finger. In this case, it's over four strings. So we're gonna use our index finger to do a down strum. So that looks something like this. Now notice the next thing is another one of these down strum markers, but it's only on the G string. Now this can work with high G or low G, but it sounds much better with the high G. This is called a ghost note technique. And if you wanna check out more on this technique specifically to create that, sort of sound, check out the link down below where you can actually watch my whole course on ghost note strumming over on my Patreon page. So we're gonna do a ghost note. What that is is just the thumb tapping the G as you move the hand down. 
Something that helps with this is you can sort of track your finger along this point of the uke, have it sort of come into contact with the fretboard, and then come just a little bit outward as the hand goes downward. Take some practice to just hit that string. That's a nice little drone note. So, so far what we have is a down strum, then that ghost note, followed immediately by this little V, and what that means is an up strum. So we're going to use our index finger and come up. And then we're going to do another ghost note. So we have... Now what you'll notice is there's also words listed here, right? The first one is the word I, but then the next three that we just worked on don't have any words. This is important because we want to play them a little bit softer. Anytime that we have words, we play it more prominent, more loud. Anytime we don't have words, just keep it a little bit more in the background for the filler. And then after this, you'll notice it's another one of those little Vs, which is an upstrum, but it's only showing one note. So this is the really intricate technique that's used in this song and used in a lot of different songs. And what it is, sort of a directional strum. What we're going to do is we're going to use our index finger and we're going to strum up on our A string. So you'll see that it goes to seven with the slide up. Same deal as before, we're gonna slide the five up to seven. And instead of playing with a single note like my thumb, or instead of strumming through all four, I'm gonna take my index, I'm gonna to try to just hit that A string. And I'm gonna slide it up to seven. Now what I find really helps with this to get a good contact is have your finger actually make contact with the fretboard like this so that you can kind of pull up and off so that just the A string can be released. And that can give you that articulation of that single note. And so it's sort of this upstrum hybrid picking that creates that sound. And then I'm gonna do it again on five and then again on three. And then I'm gonna to go to a normal down strum on the G chord, just like we played before. So this might be very overwhelming and confusing already, but if we practice it really slowly, we develop the muscle memory and you'll be playing it in no time. Don't try to do the whole song at once. Focus on, you know, a third of a bar at a time and you'll get it. And so that looks something like this so far. It goes. And then you'll notice it's going to be ghost up, ghost up to continue, right? So with the words, that's I once had a girl. And then to finish this first line here, we're going to go or should I. So to do this, we're gonna do a down strum on the zero, two, three, zero, taking our middle finger off. You'll see that's the little down strum marker. And then it's the up, so our index finger is gonna engage and play the three on the A, add the pinky just like you did before, and then the two on the A. Pretty cool, right? So here's what measure three sounds like in its entirety with the words. It's something like, I once had a girl, or should I, right? Again, very tricky, but so satisfying, I promise. If you practice it, you'll get it, and it's just so much fun. So we go on to the next measure here on measure four. This is where the technique really gets utilized because you'll notice we have an upstrum to start the measure. That's bizarre, that's not normal. And it's only on the C and E strings? What does that even mean? Well, the melody note is on the E string. So what I do is I take my index finger, and instead of starting it here, I'm going to try to place my index finger between my E and my A. I'm going to actually try to set it between on the fretboard, just like this. And then I'm going to come up, just like I would a normal up strum, only starting on the E string. Now, if you accidentally hit the G string, no big deal. It's totally fine. That's what's cool about this technique. But we're really trying to focus on that E string. So that up, and that's the word say. Then we're gonna do a ghost up, goes same little filler that we've done twice already before exactly the same and then my favorite part of the song goes she once had me and it's going to go like this now this is tricky what you're going to do for this part is you're going to play this D minor chord same as before just the middle finger here on the second fret of the C string index finger here on the first fret of the E string and you're gonna get that index finger in between the E and A strings and you're gonna come up just like you did before. Then you're going to add the ring finger on three of the A and you're going to move the index so now it's more on the A string. 
And as it comes up, you want to kind of nick the A string and the E string. If you also get the C and even the G, it's not a big deal. We're just trying to focus on that A string. Another up strum. Then we take everything off and we do another up strum with the index going between the E and A, coming on just the E and it, C strings. Again, if you accidentally hit the G string, it's okay. We just don't want to hit the A string because the E is the melody. And then to finish this, you'll notice there's a two on the C. There's two different ways you can play this. One is you can use your index finger and play that on that up strum, just like we were doing before. But what I like to do, because I just find it to be a little bit easier, is to take my thumb and play that two on the C, just like a normal pick. So this is the hardest part of the song, I think. And let's just look at the words, she once had me. So it looks like something like this. She And then to finish the measure here, it's just going to go ghost up, ghost up, down, ghost up, ghost. So just that same technique that's being used just to create some filler. Right? And so this whole measure now of measure four should sound something like this. Say, she once had me. Now, at this point, it repeats. So let's go ahead and hear what measures three and four sound like. Should be something like this. Now, at the repeat, you'll notice the last note. We're going to then go back and we're going to play the same thing, only with different words. So the first time through, it's I once had a girl, or should I say, she once had me. The second time through, the words are she showed me her room, isn't it good, Norwegian wood. So it's the same thing, just being played twice in a row. And again, what's cool about this is if you get this part down, this is a majority of the song. Uh, this it repeats many, many times throughout the tune. And so spend extra time practicing this. Make sure you're doing every motion complete the first time. The worst thing you can do is just sort of guess and then try to speed it up because you'll develop improper mus muscle memory and that just leads to disaster. Practice everything really slow, small snippets at a time. Utilize the tools here and Man, it's so much fun when you get it down. It's just so much fun. Now, one last tip with that section is it's okay to be imperfect, meaning, now I just said, make sure you do it right. So what do I mean by imperfect? Well, what I mean by imperfect is if you accidentally hit extra notes with some of your strums, it's okay. And that's because we're creating these layering effects. So if, if it says, you know, to do a down strum over all four and you kind of only hit two, or it says to do an up strum over three and you only hit two or one, it's okay because it's going to sound right. As long as you're hitting the right notes at the right time, it doesn't matter kind of the quantity of the notes that are played. In fact, it can sound better with that. So that's the verse. Now, real quick sidebar, you can make the argument that this is the chorus because the chorus of a song usually has the name and the last words that we just worked on were Norwegian wood. So you can make the argument either way, but I called it the verse just to keep it simple. So from here, we're going to go on to the chorus of the song. And the chorus, I, I think, is uh, going to really get good practice for this technique. We're going to start with a G minor chord. To play this, we're going to use our middle finger here on the third fret of the G string, index finger here on the second fret of the C, ring finger here on the third fret of the E, and the pinky here on the fifth fret of the A. Now, we're going to do a down strum, and then we're going to do a million up strums. So what this is, is uh, ask me to stay. You'll notice what I do there is I do my down strum with my index, just like we talked about before, and then I'm going to start flicking up with the index finger, trying to get the E and the A mostly. That's what's written in the tab. But if I accidentally hit the C a little bit, totally fine. That's what creates the sound. That's why if you listen to the computer play this song versus a person, it sounds so much better with a person because there's little, little imperfections of sometimes hitting extra notes that make it sound better. So we're gonna do the down, up, up, up for asked me to stay. And then we're going to take that pinky and just slide it down two frets to three on the A. We're going to do that four times. And she pulled. 
or excuse me, uh, three times, and she tall. And then we're going to go to the next thing, which is one. So to do this, we gotta do some flip flopping. And what we do is we leave our ring finger where it is. We take our pinky, middle, and index fingers off. We move our middle finger to the second fret of the C string and our index to the first fret of the A string. And we're gonna just play the one three times there. The one and the three, and if you get a little extra, that's okay. And then we're gonna take our pinky, add it back onto three of the A. Then we're gonna take it off. And that's that whole measure. So that looks something like this. Asked me to stay and she told me to sit and me. And then from here, from E, when it goes to where, we're going to go to a C chord. Just move your ring finger to the third fret of the A string. And we're going to do a down strum with our index finger. And we're back to sort of normal strumming, normal ghost note strumming with this. We're gonna do down and then ghost up, ghost up. What I mean by that is the thumb doing the ghost note technique on the down, up strum with the index finger. And we're going to do that twice. Then a full down strum with the index finger. Then a ghost up, ghost up. And then we're going to switch chords kinda here in the middle. We're gonna make this a suspended chord. All that you do is add that index finger on one of the E string, do a down strum, and then we're going to do ghost up, ghost up, and then a down back at the normal C. So that measure is very complicated from a rhythmic standpoint because it's just filler, but if you practice it nice and slow, you, you'll be able to start getting that feel. It sounds something like this, just that measure six, it goes. Nice sound. And then at the end of that measure six, you'll notice it goes to two on the C. And that's the word so. So here's measures five and six together uh, so that you can hear it something like this. Now, as it goes on to measure seven, good news, seven and five, Exactly the same, exactly identical. So nothing new here, we're just gonna go through the same thing. And then it changes here now on measure eight. Instead of going to the C chord, we're going to go to an A minor chord. To do this, our ring finger is still going to go here on the third fret of the A string, but our middle finger is going to go to the second fret of the G string. Now, that's how we traditionally play this, but I'm gonna show you one little trick. Instead of using the middle finger here, let's use the index finger on the second fret of the G string. And we'll ex I'll explain why in just a moment. We're gonna do down, ghost note up, ghost note up, down, ghost note up, ghost note up. So same exact rhythmic fill as the C chord. And if you're really struggling with these rhythmic fills and this ghost note strumming, again, be sure to check out my course on uh, the Ultimate Ukulele Strumming course down in the link below. We're gonna do that same line. Down, go step, go step, down, go step. And then we're going to go to a D chord. And this is why we used our index finger here, is all that we do is pivot it to bar across all four strings. Make sure you're getting right up next to that fret wire to give it a nice clean sound. Then you're gonna add the pinky here on fret five of the A string to complete the D chord. We're gonna do a down strum here. And then we're going to go ghost up, ghost up, down to finish that sort of measure. So measure eight sounds something like this. It goes down, ghost up, ghost up, down, ghost up, ghost up, down, ghost up, ghost up, down. And here it ends the chorus section. But let's go and hear measures seven and eight together. It should sound something like this. It should be And you can hear that that creates the momentum that goes into the next part. So that completes the chorus. Now we go on to the outro. And here's what's cool, is there's pretty much nothing new to learn for this outro. To start the outro on measure nine, it's exactly the same as measure three. They are exactly identical. So measure nine sounds like. And right now I'm going right into measure 10 because measure 10 is exactly the same as measure four. It's 
exactly the same. Now as we go on to measure 11, 11 is exactly the same as 9 and 3 was. And the last measure here, measure 12, starts off the same, which is... All of that is exactly identical. But then instead of just playing the 2 on the C, it ends with this 0, 2, 3, 5 chord, which is the same as the first chord of the entire song. Index finger on 2nd fret of the C string, middle finger on the 3rd fret of the E, pinky here on 5 of the A, and we're going to do a strum through over that entire G chord with a down strum. And so the outro sounds something like this. and strong with that sort of G5. And there you have it, there is Norwegian wood. And this is a really complicated arrangement, but if you practice it slow and you get all these little techniques, it starts to kind of build a language that you can use. And you'll notice sometimes when I play it, I might do like an up strum instead of a down. I try really hard when I'm teaching to be incredibly consistent, doing it the same way each time. But that's what's cool about this whole technique is you can kind of go back and forth between it to make your arrangement sound unique. At the end of the day, if it sounds good and you like doing it, that's all that really matters. And so have some fun with it. If you have any questions with this, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Every month on my Patreon page, we do a, a song vote based on suggestions from the patrons. Uh, and that's the arrangement I do for the month. So if you're interested in helping decide next month's tutorial, check out the link down below, as well as for the Ultimate Ukulele Strumming Course. And I'll see you guys next month for the next song tutorial. Thanks so much. See ya.